Hi folks, it's James, and if you've ever wondered if iPad drawing can truly enhance your design process, or if there are iPad workflows that can actually create billable hours, then you are in the right place. In this video, I'm going to take you through my real-world iPad workflow for designing a 5,000 square foot house, beginning with Procreate on the iPad. So you know the routine, get out your iPad, download the free starter kit of draw to scale tools I use in this video at the link below and get ready to learn a real world workflow for designing a 5,000 square foot house on an iPad. So this is a house for a new client on a very wooded site in the Northeast. You can see there are lots of boulders, uh, sort of a perfect hardwood Eastern forest. And there's a dramatic drop off on one side of the site over these huge boulders. And we want to make sure we take care of that or take advantage of that. The other thing that comes with this client is their love for two very important pieces of architecture, the Philip Johnson glass house and the Sana if that's how you pronounce it, Grace Farms Riverwalk structure. What more could you ask for a client? Plus, they have their own planning program that they use, a program that creates rooms and adjacencies and square footages. So we took that as a point of departure and just started scheming based on those rooms, but looking for a diagrammatic idea, a pure architectural idea that we could talk about and encourage them to pursue because of their passion for architecture, obviously. And so all of these sketches had to be translated from paper into Procreate, or rather they didn't have to be, but I couldn't wait to do it because I love to use Procreate for this. And here's an example of using Procreate to tell the story of these different diagrams. Here's the uh, diagramming stencils that I've created, and you can purchase these at the link in the description below, but it helps give these sketches. They could be a little too funky, uh, certainly by comparison to Rhino sketches these days. So these stencils give them a little bit more of a professional feel. Here's the second scheme. We call this the scheme without halls, where the rooms overlap and hopefully eliminate circulation. You actually move through rooms. So each of these rooms, the whole question becomes, how do you convince the client? How do you uh, explain the story, get them excited about the difference between these schemes? What does this one have to offer versus the other? And Procreate is perfect for this because of that ability to adjust sizes right on the page and even import the images that I always begin with. Those sketches you saw from the paper just came right in. But it also gives you a chance to clarify these schemes even more. And when you clarify these schemes for yourself, you obviously clarify them for your client, but you become a better architect. Your thinking gets more clear. This scheme we call Fred and Ginger, one and one equals three, or that kind of synergy represented by a couple that really complements each other. Uh, Fred, on the one case, is a fictitious person, but he's got a guitar studio and a tie-dye studio, and uh, Ginger has interests in reading and studying and crafts, so we had to accommodate both of those. Now, we wanted to prepare site plans for each of these schemes as well. And again, this is as much about being accountable for ourselves as to the client. Again, using Procreate to quickly adjust the site plan that we inherited, the PDF site plan. We were able to take trees out that might have covered up the zone that we were interested in. And we put in the developer's subdivision plan as a point of comparison, showing with a two-story colonial that they would have put in. So here we took those sketchbook sketches and we put them on their own layer in Procreate, brought them as overlays onto the site plan, scaled them, but this time we scaled the scale itself down to fit the site plan, sort of retroactively scaling all these. And we positioned the scheme one by one, again, showing the client how much uh, of the site they cover, what, how they compared between themselves. And you can always add a little color like we've done to make sure this is even clearer. You can see a very early SketchUp model that just popped up. This time now we're gonna also want to indicate the trees beyond just the kind of engineering way of representing trees. So you can see we've used Procreate to create trees of three different sizes, uh, emphasizing only the largest trees on the site. And that is now color coded. Here are the boulders being added the sun, the north arrow, the, I should say, the path of the sun during the day. And again, these stencils all coming in handy, uh, stencils that are part of that uh, brush set 
of architectural symbols. And then finally, some hand lettering. This, I will admit, is the thing I'm most insecure about. I love uh, a beautifully made rhino diagram, the kind you see Bjark Ingels making all the time, uh, with actual simple text on it. But in this case, handwriting is part of the funkiness, I, I suppose you would say, or the artisanal quality of our presentations. So it is a little difficult to do actual text in a very comfortable and easy way in Procreate, so I do defer to hand lettering. Now, given that sketch the homeowner provided us with, given that uh, plan that they created in that software designed especially for homeowners, we literally just took the rooms apart in Procreate and started to arrange them to match these schemes. So underlying each of these each of these diagrams, you would say, is the actual paper scheme that we drew up based on their whims so far. And here that paper bag sketch uh, made on a one sleepy morning when I had to get up early with a puppy. That diagram then easily comes into Procreate and you can start to refine this now based on there's there's three layers to this sketch now. There's the paper bag, there's the room diagram based on the client's software, and there are the new ideas that are emerging. This one is called Square in the Circle. We try to give these stories each a, a kind of a unique name. And you can see me working through here uh, can I really preserve this diagram? That becomes the question because architecture, I mean, recognizable architecture, the kind that gets you inspired. If we're honest, there has to be a certain amount of tension between the diagram, the pure diagram, and the exigencies or the demands of the client and how they're going to live day to day. Otherwise, you're never going to recognize the origin of that diagram in the building. You're just going to have a developer home with rooms laid out according to convenience, but there won't be a, a central idea that's organizing everything. So again, Procreate is, is so perfect for this because you're not using reams of tracing paper, you're just using layers to go over one by one. And you could do the same thing with Morfolio, but remember you cannot, Im you cannot manipulate an image that you bring into Morfolio. Whereas I was able to bring in those paper sketches and stretch them and make them more orthogonal uh, and manipulate that. So this is a real plus of Procreate. Plus, I find the interface to be so much more modern and understandable, I guess you would say. Now here you're seeing another thing where I often switch to a different color and this I think we're up to about four or five layers now. And I'm trying to, in, in keeping with that initial diagram of theirs, I'm trying to maintain these cross axes, these extended views through the building, through this central court. So we haven't been too literal about borrowing the ideas from either the glass house or the river or the Grace Farms river walk. But we're trying to preserve obviously this circle in the square and to have this open void, this kind of Zen-like meditative space. And here is the section. Uh, again, easy as pie in Procreate. You just start projecting these. Notice the sky is, is a very soft, almost an airbrush effect using the, literally using the round brush effect and creating this gradient. And I then imported these stencils. These stencils are also part of the um, architectural brushes or brush stencils that I offer. And they, it's a very convincing way to make a very quick elevation. So again, I'm back on the plan itself because of the ability to go back and forth when we probably don't have to see too much more of this. But notice how, what's your opinion? Do you think I'm keeping the diagram? Am I starting to lose the diagram? This is what keeps me up at night as an architect. Uh, can I maintain, can I make sure that the idea persists all the way through to the end in a form that is both um, clearly recognizable, I suppose you would say, by artists and other artists and architecture lovers, uh, and also can it accommodate their their day-to-day -day needs in a very practical and sensitive way. So uh, having done the section now, I'm looking at possible elevations, like how do you handle this this huge square. This is at least 85 feet on each side. 
you don't want it to look like a big box store, but it's going to look like something that uh, is not at all conventional, uh, especially in this neighborhood of other conventional houses. Now, they are uh, separated at some distance to their neighbors, and they do, uh, they have said they love architecture, and so we're pushing some architectural concepts early on we don't know if we're going to use these in our first meeting. More, this is more of proof of concept to ourselves. But here are ideas about how this might be handled and still maybe look like residential architecture. You can see also I like to invert the part of the plan that I'm addressing in those elevations and have that placed above the blue sky of the elevation. This is our, our effort. Once we get there, we have to test the idea even further. And now I'm making sure that that square is to scale. It's on a 24 by 18 by 300 DPI document inside of Procreate, inside of my iPad. So all of the FF and E stencils that I've created will work to test these, uh, test these different rooms. Can these rooms actually work? And you want to be sure when you're doing hand design like this that your sketchy lines aren't throwing off the kind of subtle the, the kind of subtleties that you get when you're being more precise in SketchUp or in Rhino. So there's a plus and a minus to this kind of hand sketching. The great plus is that you're staying as fluid as possible and clearly you can see this going on there's just train of thought going on I, i'm thinking at the speed of the pencil so to speak and i'm not too worried about that precision because the minute i get into sketchup i know i'm going to kind of lock up and treat it as more of a video game and the completionist in me is going to come out and make sure that all of these rooms and the, all of the walls are the proper thickness in sketchup interior walls versus exterior walls so sketchup is going to basically slow down my creative process here once i switch over to it but that is a good thing i do want to be held accountable by actual dimensions and actual clearances and actual codes so there'll be plenty of time for that but for the moment i stay in procreate and keep working this out until i think i have a form that I can feel comfortable presenting to the client. And I'm getting close here, labeling the rooms, making sure they're the right size. Notice I'm using the scale very liberally as I move around. The scale is also part of this 300 DPI ecosystem. So everything I draw can be checked in Procreate and make sure it's at scale. And I'm even getting down to the point of being very granular here with door swings. Now, we're moving on to the so-called octagonal scheme now. You may recall from that early, early romp through the sketchbook, there were a number of these schemes, and one of them, the most pure diagram, was this octagonal scheme. So this is a different approach. This goes, moves away from that idea of the purity of a landlocked outdoor atrium right in the middle of a house. This one says, no, we're going to have a more open courtyard and sort of let nature bleed in in its natural state. Kind of a Frederick Law Olmsted, man-made nature, made to look like nature. But having more space, again, we're, we're making sure that the client, we want to cover all bases. We're making sure that the client can zero down on what they're most comfortable with which of these stories they're most comfortable with and, and which can they best visualize living in. So this one, clearly a, a rather extravagant scheme because all of these volumes have their own wrapper and there's a lot more exterior wall than there would be with a rectangular house. But again, this is just concept design and we want to make their choices as clear as possible with these various bookends. This is a, a snippet from after we got into SketchUp and started to test some of these theories. And here we're just trying to proactively figure out what a roof might look like for this three-dimensional volume. Because, again, we, you saw the elevation and the, the section earlier studying what they might be like from the inside. 
But Procreate is also wonderful in helping me f- copy and move over and then modify this basic diagram and coming up with these possible ways to put a roof over this unusual structure and this very large structure. Uh, you can see different ideas about spirals and U-shapes and the key here is going to be a repetitive roof structure that keeps the cost down. So each of these is trying to at least have be made of four quarters, you might say, and, and at the very least each quarter will be the same so that there's an opportunity to pre-manufacture these roofs and try to control costs that way. And again, Procreate makes it so easy to go back and forth between the plan and the roof plans that you start to layer over the top of it and even start to study elevations. So again, clearly the elevation is going to be the most challenging part of this, how to sell that to the client. And we also began working in models. So shortly after laying things out, and you've got things going on several fronts. You've got models going, you've got the studies you're doing in Procreate, you've got the studies you're doing in SketchUp, it's all working towards that same goal of clarifying each of the stories in advance and so that you can make that simple presentation, that first meeting to the client and get them more focused or get them thinking about all the issues ultimately they'll have to resolve. To learn more about any of the techniques or strategies you've seen in this video, tap on the links in the description below to learn all about the courses we offer full of real world examples of actual workflows, workflows that create billable hours, and plenty of real world examples showing the everyday tasks of a concept designer and how they can be improved using the iPad drawing. To see the next video in this series, click on this link here, and I will see you in the next video.